Okay, now that we finally have um, our board getting drawn correctly and we are hiding all the uh, mines correctly, uh, now we can actually write some code to play the game. Okay, so let's flip over to our notes. And so we need a mouse state variable, which we already have. Uh, we need a way to check uh, the left button and the right button because the left click and right click mean different things. We need to take an X and a Y on the screen and convert it into a row and a column in the array. And we must ignore clicks that are off of the game board. Okay, so um, every time through we want to check to see if they have clicked on a mouse button. If they have, then we have something to do. If they haven't, uh, we don't have to do anything. So uh, if they click on the left button, there are several cases. And one case is that the cell is covered and a bomb is in the cell. If there is a bomb there, then uh, the game is over. Uh, the cell is covered and a number is in the cell, then we reveal the number. Or the cell is covered and has a flag. Uh, do nothing. We've already uh, marked that as a place we think we have a bomb. Uh, the other possibility is the cell is already uncovered and we just ignore the left click. Okay, so let's work on the left click first. Um, actually, actually, let's work on the mouse positions first. We need to figure out which row and column the screen pixel coordinates are on the board. Okay, so let's uh, flip over to our update program. And once we read the mouse, uh, we need to figure out what row and column that is. Okay. Every 48 columns of pixels and every 48 rows of pixels, we're going to increment our row number or column number by one. So we have to take the mouse uh, dot X and we need to, that's going to tell us how far over we are, in other words, which column we're in. And we need to divide that by the width of a cell, underscore, cell width. Okay, if we just go, if we just consider up to 480, uh, which is as far as our Minesweeper game is going to go, then uh, if we do this, we'll get a number, we'll take a number from 0 to 479, we'll divide it by 48, and we'll get a number from 0 through 9. But that's not what I want. I want a number from 1 through 10, so I have to add 1 onto it. Uh, and that's because we're displaying columns 1 through 10 and rows 1 through 10. And we've got that border of pixels around uh, the top and the bottom and the left and the right that caused me so many problems trying to get the uh, board drawn on the screen uh, in the earlier video. So uh, the row is going to be the exact same thing. We take the mouse dot y and uh, we're going to let's try it again. Uh, divide it by cell width, and we're going to add one on uh, because those also go from one to ten, not zero through nine. Okay. Now, if they clicked off the board, we don't do anything. So, uh, if um, the uh, let me see, if the uh, column is greater than uh, board size, um, then I want to uh, return. Okay, there's nothing to do. They clicked off the right on that cornflower blue part over on the right side. Um, so uh, we'll do the same for thing for the row. Uh, if for the row, I don't know if, I don't know if, we, if we get back numbers for the row if they go off the board or not, but we'll do a little defensive programming here. And then we want to return. And obviously those could be combined into one if statement. So if we get this far, we know that they have clicked somewhere on the board okay so row and column are valid and now what i want to do is i want to see if they clicked on the mouse on this tick of the clock so if mouse dot uh, left button is pressed on this tick of the clock and uh, previous mouse dot left button 
button was released, uh, then I know that they clicked on the mouse on this tick of the clock, and this is where I respond to it. Okay, see so what we're going to do when the left mouse button is clicked. Uh, we're going to flip over to our Word document and see what's going on there. So uh, the cell is covered and a bomb is in the cell. If that's the case, reveal the bomb and the game is over. Okay, so cell is covered and it has a bomb. So let's go back over to Visual Studio. So how do I know if the cell is covered? Well, the name of it is cell. And I'm looking at this row and this column. And I want to see if it is covered. So uh, uncovered uh, is false. And if it is, if there's a bomb there, as bomb, well, they blew it. They clicked on a bomb and the game is over. And for right now, we're just going to do uh, an exit. And, uh, you know, we wouldn't want to abruptly quit like that in the middle of the real game, but uh, we can always go back and, and fix this up later. Okay, that's one possibility. The next possibility is, let's go take a look at our Word document. Uh, the cell is covered and has a number in the cell, so reveal the number. Okay, so let's go back over here. Uh, it's covered, and there is... So if uh, is uncovered and actually we do not have to write anything else there. We just have to uh, say that uh, now it's going to be uncovered. So uh, we'll set cell and then when it's time to draw, if it's uncovered, we will draw the number. Okay, now I know we had two more possibilities here for uh, a click on the left mouse button. Let's go back over to Word. And uh, it's covered and it has a flag, so do nothing. So let's flip back over here. So if we do nothing, we don't even have to check that. Uh, and the other possibility was um, it's already uncovered. So we do nothing. So they're clicking on uh, a number. So let's go back over here. And uh, now we want to set it to is, uh, if it's uncovered, and, then we, and they click on it, then we want to, um, I'm sorry, if it's covered, uncovered is false. Uh, then we want to uncover it. So set uncovered equal to true. Uh, but... Uh, we also have to make sure that there's not a flag there. Uh, so dot has flag is false. Okay. So it's covered. It does not have a flag. Then we set equal to uh, uncovered equal to true. Okay. Okay, now let's go down to draw. And before we were just drawing blanks all the time, this time we're going to have to do something a little bit different. So uh, if there's a flag there, we want to draw the flag. So uh, if uh, the cell at this row and this column dot has flag, and I don't really need to put equals true there, that's uh, not necessary, uh, then what I want to do is I want to draw uh, the flag. So sprite batch dot draw. And uh, I want to draw the flag texture. I want to, the rectangle is going to be C, a cell, so R comma C. And I want its uh, position. That's our rectangle. And uh, the last thing I want is uh, color. And we're always going to do white. Okay. Else, if it is uncovered, then I want to draw the number. So uh, the texture for the number is in an array. And this one's, the notation here is a little bit ugly, but we can figure it out. So sprite bash dot. And then I've got to figure out 
which texture I want to draw. Okay, uh, we'll leave that. Uh, it's going to be at cell sub r comma c dot position, and the color is going to be white. Okay, semicolon. Now, I'm going to draw a number, and the number I'm going to draw uh, is a number from 0 through 8. And if it has zero neighbors, then I want to draw this, okay? Numbers sub-zero. Uh, it's a texture. Uh, this is a texture. This is a texture. So all I have to do is take numbers, and the subscript is going to be the number of neighbors for that cell, okay? So uh, the array that I want is called numbers, and the subscript is going to be this current cells, whoops, dot neighboring bombs. That's my subscript. I need a closing square bracket and get rid of those blanks there. And my third possibility uh, is uh, else I'm going to draw a blank. So I think this will work. Uh, we'll find out in a minute here. So I should be able to click with my left mouse button and either get a number to reveal or get a flag to reveal. So let's go ahead and start. And now we start in the upper left hand corner assuming that there's not a bomb there. So that has zero neighbors. Zero neighbors. Zero, 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 one. Okay. Uh, I'm going to try clicking on it again. You know, nothing happens when I click on them again. I'm going to try planting a flag here. And um, I can't plant a flag uh, until I have a right mouse click. So uh, all I can do is just check to see if they're uncovered or not. And apparently I just clicked on a bomb there because it exited the program for me. Okay, so uh, we do need to take care of the right click. So let's go back up here. And uh, this is where we check to see if the left mouse button has been clicked. And then what we want to see is uh, we can do an else if. Mouse right button has been pressed. And the previous mouse dot right button was released. So we're catching you on the first tick after the click. So what I want to do is, um, so they're clicking on the right mouse button. Uh, if the cell is uncovered and it does not have a flag, then I'm going to say that there's a flag there. So if uh, is uncovered uh, equals true, and um, there's not a flag there. This is supposed to be COL. And if there's not a flag there at uh, R comma C, row comma column rather up here, um, got a little messed up here. There's not a flag. So has flag is false. Okay. If that's true, then that means they want us to put a flag there. So cell dot has flag. Okay. And the other possibility is um, if uh, else if, otherwise uh, we're going to have a problem here. If the cell at this row and this column dot uh, is covered up, so is uncovered equals true, and there is a flag there, then that's how we turn it off.
Okay, that red wavy line should go away. It did. Okay. So now we should be able to uh, both left click and right click. Let's go ahead and uh, start the program up. Oh, that's got a neighbor. That's a bad place to start. So let's go over here. And these all have zero neighbors, so I can go to all of their neighbors and safely click. Well, I can't do that now. Uh, this guy has zero neighbors, so I can go to all of his neighbors and safely click. Uh, these two do too, so I can go to those and safely click. This guy has no neighbors, so I can click here and here. And uh, so this has one neighbor, this has one. This has, there must be a flag right there, so I'm going to right click on that. And I'm not getting a flag, so let's stop it. Let's go back and see. Maybe I forgot to draw something down here. Um, if it has a flag, then I want to draw the flag texture. Uh, if it uh, is uncovered, um, then I want to draw the number. Otherwise, I want to draw a blank. So apparently, um, so this is where I want to set it. So um, if it's uncovered equals false. That well, should have been false, not true. Um, perhaps my use of a negative here um, could have been uh, could have been worded a little bit differently maybe I should have gone with is covered instead of is uncovered uh, but now let's try it and then if it's uncovered um, we decided that we're either gonna, if it has flag we're not going to say is uncovered we're just going to say uh, there we go so I had those turned around now let's try running it and I think we'll be good Okay, no neighbors, no neighbors. These guys have no neighbors. I can check all of his. Okay, this guy's no neighbor, so I can do all of his neighbors. And I know that, uh, well, this guy has one neighbor, this guy has one neighbor, this guy only has one neighbor, so it's got to be right here. So I'm going to right click on that, and I get a flag. Now I'm going to right click again. And I'm just going back and forth, and it is letting me mark. Uh, it's letting me mark where I think uh, the bombs are or the mines are. So that part appears to be working. You know, if I click over here, uh, if I try right clicking on one of these, which I'm doing, uh, nothing happens. Okay. So it has to be blank, or it has to have a flag on it in order for me to be able to have a valid right click in. Let's see what happens if I click over here or right click over here and nothing because this is off the board. So it looks like we're doing pretty well. And this is going to be a really long video, so we will stop it and we will clean things up in our final video.